Give it up for Matt Abbott. Come on! If you're expecting culture, you might be a little bit disappointed. Some of it rhymes, some of it doesn't rhyme. Not all of it's that good, to be honest, but I'll never reject attention. Um, and if, if I do forget my words, by the way, I am a professional, it's just I've banged my head on that ceiling that many fucking times. I don't even know where I am or what I'm doing. Um, this first one's called... I'll just sort this out first, I'm awkward enough as it is. Right, okay. This first one's called HMRC, which stands for Helping Millionaires Ruin Countries. And it's around the whimsical suggestion on how tax money could be spent better. And if we've got any Coldplay fans in the room, I'm sorry about the first line, but have a little cuddle outside. <laughs> when Chris Martin married Gwyneth, that's some serious VAT. We could have paid Messi to play in Plymouth from the tender age of three or found a vocal coach for Cheryl. But as everybody knows, dislike her at your peril because what Simon says goes. We could pay for... We could pay for Boris Johnson to have a simple back and sides. We could ban that bloody Ronson for every venue nationwide. We could guarantee that car insurance is easily acquired and then them lousy go compare and adverts are no longer required. We could make sure every hospital has plenty of beds to lie in. Every mother has the food to stop her baby crying. Every school is modernised with flourishing resources and higher education is possible for kids who don't have horses. Pension plans are plenty and savings are actually save. I know I'm only 26 and I'm sounding rather grave, but for such a moral fuckwits and it can't just be ignored. I can always talk about football soon if you're starting to feel bored. Make sure that bloody bus for work is always there on time. And scrap the Olympic Stadium, spend money fighting crime and funding the royal wedding. Christ, I could have cried out about a one-off special on that show, don't tell the bride. <laughs> Two and a half million people are said to be unemployed and everything that Cameron said seems to be null and void because he wanted a big society when everyone chipped in and then he spent fucking billions on a war we'll never win. Don't tell us we're in it together just like you're a normal civilian. We're all skint and demoralised and you're worth 33 million. The UK government spending is nothing short of a farce. You can take your self-assessment form and stick it up your ass. <laughs> I did that in Letchworth a few weeks ago, people just sort of politely applauded and then walked to the back of the room, so it's nice to get a, a mix of responses. Um, also, just so you know, I do sort of like rhymey funny stuff to start off with, I mean some of it doesn't rhyme and it's not even funny, so just so you know that now, it's going to be a bit disappointing at some point. Um, it's Friday, isn't it? Everyone likes Friday night, don't they? It's lots of, yeah. Generally Friday's the busiest night, loads of people that I, I generally, I go out on Tuesdays. I don't really like crowds. I just, I go to the same pub, the Brewers Pride in Osset, and I get the same pint, and I sit in the same chair, the same table, the same corner every Tuesday night. I don't really go out on Fridays, to be honest. I just don't really like socialising. That's, oh, I'm a poet, see, I'm an isolated wanker. And, uh, I, uh, I go down to the Brewers Pride on a Tuesday, and uh, as I said, I sit in the same table, and there's a group of men who also go, and they also sit in the same table, and they insist, the pub, right, has got Sky Sports and BT Sport, they insisted having teletext on whenever there's a football match, and they sit there with betting slips, and we don't really talk to each other, and every time someone scores, we go, I'll update the betting slips. And they look at me and think, he's a bit of a sad wanker, he's writing poetry, and I look at them and think, oh, I'd quite like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my homage to that pub. Homage. See, I am cultured. <laughs> with, a, with a heavy bodied aftershave aroma, the tap room is a church on Tuesday night. The soundtrack might be girlfriend in a coma, but thankfully the jukebox doesn't play that modern shite. Where distant lives and distant wives and worries wait outside in the tap room of the Ossie Brewers Pride. The washing up was finished before the plates were even dirty. Desert boots slipped out the door at bang on 7.30. In four hours time they'll be lurching home higher than a kite from the tap room that's a church on Tuesday night. The pictures swapped for teletext, the Premier League on pause. The pics are there, accumulate as pixelated scores. Predict the unpredictable, pin hopes on hopeless plights. In the Brewer's Pride, the tap room is a church on Tuesday night. This farmer's blonde is far too bland. He must be blind to make that blunder. 30 feckless seconds, my accumulators all asunder. Always only one team short, I'm bound to get it right. In the Brewer's Pride, the tap room is a church on Tuesday night. The politicians cameo for 15 flimsy minutes, but then it's back to tactics and the black ticks that'll win it. Cause four quid on at Ladbrokes, he's a general.
generous return in a tap room on a Tuesday where they pray but never learn. One more jar and then the road debrief with our disciples. Statistics like a secret code, opinions all recycled. Never mind that Spanish flair, we need a bigger fight. No nonsense in the tap room that's a church on Tuesday night. Soaring highs and forlorn frowns from filthy rich to Ipswich town. Concerned that Burnley are going down, they'll soon be out of sight. The centre half's a dirty sod, the barman knows to only nod. We've got football, who needs God in church on a Tuesday night? Yeah. Yeah.